you know, the first question we're likely to encounter in a new meeting with somebody is, what do you do? And according to how you answer that question, you'll either be, you know, praised and become a subject of interest, or you'll be left alone by the peanuts. And this suggests to me that we live in a world of snobs. And a snob is really anyone who takes a small part of you and uses that to come to a universal and rigid sense of who you are and how much you matter. And the kind of snobbery that is dominant in the world today is not around bloodlines or lineage or your closeness to the Queen of England as it used to be, but what job you have, and in particular how impressive your powers of financial accumulation are. And according to that criteria, people will judge you immediately. So it's sometimes said that we live in a materialistic world. I don't think we do live in a materialistic world. We simply live in a world where material accumulation has become the gateway to the respect and love that we all crave. Uh, it's not really the riches and the you know, fast cars, etc., that we crave. And that's, that's a different way of looking at so-called greed. The next time you walk down the road and you see somebody driving a Ferrari, don't think this is somebody who's greedy, who's materialistic. Think first and foremost, this is somebody with an incredibly intense need for love, who has not been able to find the honor and respect they need in normal ways, and therefore you know, they're needing so much more stuff in order to feel they have the right to exist. If you can deal with just riding a bike through town, and that's okay, something's gone right in your past. <laughs> Look, I think um, one of the most beautiful but also dangerous ideas, it's an American idea, is the notion that anyone can achieve anything, right? Um, and we hear these messages from everywhere. That is the spirit of our times. It's a beautiful message, but it's a dangerous message. Because if you really believe in a world where you can do anything, and you've only done a bit, you've only done something, my goodness, how crushed you will feel. The possibilities for humiliation are so much greater now. You know, if you go to an American bookshop and you look at the self-help section, there are basically two kinds of books on that shelf. Um, the first kind is books telling you how to make a million dollars in, in, in an afternoon. And the other books are books telling you how to cope with what they call low self-esteem. And the two are totally related. If you live in a culture that's telling you how to make a million dollars in an afternoon, you're gonna have a massive self-esteem problem. Because how can you achieve esteem of yourself when you're gonna be part of the 99%, not the 1%? We've now created a life where an ordinary life is materially more comfortable than it's ever been. An ordinary life, you're gonna get a good car, you're gonna be able to have a bath every night, you're gonna have a roof over your head, you're gonna have pretty nourishing food, right? So materially, an ordinary life is terrific. But then we've put a snake in the grass. We've ruined paradise that we've built and our ancestors have built for ourselves by telling ourselves that actually, contrary to everything we hoped for, actually an ordinary life is psychologically not good enough. It's not good enough just to drive an ordinary car and have an ordinary house and have an ordinary bath once a day and have an ordinary meal. No, that's not good enough. You need to be extraordinary. Become Mark Zuckerberg. Become somebody else, right? This is a kind of torture that we've imposed on ourselves. How have we made a life where the the statistical odds of you leading that life, the 99% surety that you will lead that life has come to seem like a humiliation and the wrong sort of life. This is setting yourself up for disaster. Sure, and look, you know, don't get me wrong, a bit of ambition is fantastic. A bit of get up and go is fantastic. We're not in any danger of being unambitious. The danger now is suicide. I I'm putting it at its starkest. The danger is that we will feel so inadequate in relation to the expectations placed upon us that we may choose to end our own lives. And this happens in huge numbers, right? Um, we are suffering from an epidemic of mental unwellness, largely bred by the expectation that our lives will be stellar, when in fact they are far more likely only to be ordinary. Uh, our lack of acceptance of ourselves has made us sick. So we don't need any more reminders from General Patton or anyone else to get up and go and be a winner. We know that that's in our DNA now as modern human beings. We've had that message and it's making us sick. We know it so well, we know it too well. And we need to hear another message. And that message is, you're okay. It's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to be ordinary. It's okay not to know what's going on. It's okay to be lost in a universe, most of whose recesses will always be darkness to us. That's all of it okay. And joy is not going to be making $10 million. Joy is going to be a drink with a friend. Joy is going to be a meal that turns out okay. Joy is going to be a day at the end of which 
No one's died. There's been no crisis. It's been more or less all right. Love is not going to be perfection. Love is going to be occasionally a hand held by somebody who understands bits of you, never the whole of you, but has charity towards your darkest moments. You know, that is the life we're going to lead. And let that be okay.